Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live today. We have a very special guest here, and my wife is going to introduce Ivan for you. As you can see on the screen here now, uh, Ivan was uh, introduced by Sputnik, uh, or at least made famous by a quote that he made just recently. The NATO representatives want danger as before it was the German of Hitler, Germany of Hitler. Uh, very provocative statement, and yet at the same time, very truthful as well. Jana, go right ahead. So as Stephen said, we have a very special guest, Ivan Pernar, that's his name. And Ivan, hello, welcome to our show. Uh, and before I give you... Yeah, before I give you first question, can you please introduce yourself to our viewers and also you are a part of ZVZ party in Croatia. If you can please just say who you are, what is your party about? My awakening began uh, like five years ago, six years ago, when I saw a movie, American Dream. It's an animated movie and at that moment, moment, at that point, I realized that money is debt, that all the cash we have is created through credit. And then I realized that the whole world is enslaved by debt, not because people live on credit, but because money as such is defined as credit. And so we formed the party, political party ZVZ, and it is uh, opposed to this neoliberal global agenda, which seeks to dominate and basically to enslave the whole world, either through credit, either through brute force. And uh, so we are anti-imperialist, anti-globalist, anti-NATO, anti-EU, and we want a sovereign state of our own. And we want that our central bank is financing our government operations directly without private banks in between. So we want to deprivatize the process of money creation. And on that platform, we have gained seats in Croatian Parliament, and now our country is planning to send our troops, our soldiers, on Russian frontier. And as uh, elected representatives, we are opposing that plan. That's wonderful. And you had your voice also in uh, Parliament. Now, let me ask you these questions. How do you react to the aggressive NATO force buildup in Eastern Europe? To say from the beginning, the whole Ukrainian crisis began not with Russia, but with American-sponsored regime change, which, which happened on a violent way. So the overthrow of the government in Ukraine happened not through elections, not through votes, not through popular will, but instead through force, intimidation, uh, killing, uh, killings of police officers and so on. And then the government which was installed to run the, the Ukraine be, became very pro-American. It means that suddenly, instead of uh, normal friendly ties with uh, their neighbor, Russia, they decided that now they have a new friend, a new friend which seeks to dominate the whole world. And this new friend his name is the United States of America. And when Russia realized, or, or better said, when Russian uh, citizens of Ukraine realized that uh, their country, is, Ukraine, is going to become a part of this uh, NATO alliance and is going to, to, to this European regime, then they basically rebelled against these rebels. So it's a, it's not a, it's a counter-rebellion, let's say. It's not a real uh, rebellion, as, or how, how to say it, eh? mm -hmm. Well, you know, one thing I've been, I, have, I agree with on this as well. I mean, even uh, for those that are not uh, maybe familiar fully with the, uh, the Ukrainian uh, situation, what happened there, the evidence clearly shows that the CIA was involved in toppling the government. In fact, John Stockwell, who is a former uh, CIA uh, head of uh, uh, or director of operations for the Central Intelligence Agency, he was a whistleblower when he came out of the CIA saying that the United States government uh, is actively involved in toppling democratic governments around the world. And, and this time, back, back... It did not begin with Ukraine, nor will it end with Ukraine. This story 
this corrupt story and corrupt shame repeats over and over again. And because of that, uh, I have realized that the true uh, aim of America in the end is to overthrow even the Russian government, mm -hmm. if they could. And, uh, and Ukraine was just, how to say, last step on that plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like you don't attack Iran first, first you go to Syria, then you go to Iran. Uh, just as Wesley Clark said in his speech, he said he numbered the, which countries America would topple in uh, and occupy in the next few years. And just as he said, he, he was like a prophet, but he was not a prophet. He just saw a piece of paper which indicated what would happen. And uh, what we are witnessing now is that uh, after overthrow of this government in Ukraine, this new government, which is supported by United States, and uh, to, together with this uh, NATO and EU, Bristol and Washington, they are making a massive troop buildup on the Russian border. And uh, this uh, is done contrary to all common sense, because there is no indications whatsoever that Russia would in any point in near future try to attack uh, any of its Western neighbors. So there is uh, no a single sign that Russia is going to attack either uh, uh, Estonia, Litov, Lithuania, Belarus, of course not. They are allied with Belarus or Poland or uh, even even in, um, in Ukraine there is peace now. So what uh, in Eastern regions, Donetsk and Lugansk, there is no war there. They don't want to separate from Ukraine. They just want uh, to, to have some kind of a federational, uh, how to say, federational uh, co constitution. Or, yes, yes, they, they, they don't want to, they don't aim for a real separation. And uh, so, so, so the U Ukrainian situation is now stabilized. Uh, in, in, in Estonia, Litvin, and Lithuania, that there were no problems at all for all these years. And suddenly, NATO says we sent soldiers to eastern borders. And what is even worse, our country participated in war against Russia together with Hitler's Germany in 1941. Mm -hmm. So we were there in 1941 under German command. And now, so many decades later, again, we will be sent there on this Russian border and again, by irony, we will be again commanded by the Germans. And I said that our soldiers should not go there, that this uh, NATO scheme is not uh, our scheme and we have nothing to do with these global plans, which are done by people who run the Federal Reserve System and who privatize the money system. And we just want to keep out of that conflict. And uh, the government keeps pushing this agenda. So. Today in our parliament, I asked for a session to have a, to stop, to have a pause, and to, to, to speak to my fellow uh, colleagues in parliament about this serious and grave issue, which is uh, literally bothering us as a society and bothering uh, us as people, because there is no popular support for such a decision. If you ask German people, do they want their soldiers to go on the Russian border once again, they all would say no. They would all say, we have been there already, we don't want to go back. But these uh, puppet politicians, these democratic puppets, they insist on these measures, so we must do all we can to oppose it. And you're correct, uh, Ivan, because we are here based in Czech Republic in Prague and we have seen a NATO convoy come through here and they have brought their, um, their weapons through Czech Republic going to Romania and other you know, Eastern states. The, yeah, and Eastern we are States also point. seeing that people of Eastern Europe, because we have seen in 2015 and 2016 a lot of protests against NATO buildup and these people here are viewing it as a aggression or actually as a provocation against uh, Russia 
And there is this, uh, this artificial fear that's been created by the West, and they're pushing on government of Europe, on governments of Europe, of European states, this danger of supposed Russian aggression. Uh, they even have in a Senate bill, uh, they have a bill in the Senate of the United States, it's a bill 2277 that is supposed to pass which is against supposed Russian aggression. However, people here know we don't have Russian aggression here. We had uh, peace with Russia, as you say. So you, you, you are probably aware of these sanctions that has been put on Russia? I, I, I have to say that our uh, prime minister came recently from Brussels, and he briefed us in parliament, and he said that in Brussels they decided that sanctions go on. And as a representative, I said, why sanctions go on? And who of us as parliamentary members made such a decision? And do people of Croatia want sanctions to go on? He had no answers. So basically, we don't know who is making decisions. We are not deciding on anything. We are just being informed. And uh, these uh, decisions that are taken in Brussels by unknown, unknown bureaucrats, we have nothing to do with those decisions, and uh, there is a complete lack of democratic process. People in European Union today decide nothing, so it's all being outsourced to elite, the right. one percent yes. at the top, and uh, and uh, the poor people are being uh, asked uh, for their uh, opinion or, or not opinion. They are being. Uh, uh, questioned on this issue only when they say, uh, take your clothes, you go to Eastern Front, you know. This is not the way we <coughs> accept uh, the government to function, either in past or in the future. Well, you know, Ivan, what we're seeing ourselves as I'm watching this whole situation unfold, and even as an American citizen myself, I am very much opposed to what the Obama administration uh, is doing uh, here in Europe. And, uh, and sir, 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 I must uh, stop you. Uh, we had a situation that uh, young people from our country, they had, uh, how to say, um, they had received, like who did not do military training, they received uh, a no notice, notification, to go report themselves to recruiting center, you know. And people are said, like, why are we receiving these letters, you know. And now, as things begin to unfold, we see that soldiers are being sent on Russian border, and then you tell me in Czech Republic there is military convoys going to Eastern Front, and suddenly I think that if there would be more participants in this talk, that all the people would notice similar things happening in their own country. And we, as uh, elected representatives of people, must ask what is going on. Yes, exactly. I mean, we had here in Czech Republic protests, and there is one uh, particular protester that came out, and he was mooning, literally mooning, half naked, the United States uh, NATO convoy. And then he was put in prison. But no, we, we are seeing that people here are understanding that this is a provocation of Russia, and we have peace with Russia. We don't need sac sanctions with Russia, because it is, it is hurting our economy. This policy is benefiting no one right. except the elite, uh, because elite profits from war. Elite profits from production of weapons, from production of yes. fear, yes. from production of violence, and just as and as you see war as a tragedy, they see a war as a way to to get extra profit. So yes. that's no, in a sh short words. Even just to move on in our interview, what do you think of Syria? Let me tell you, yesterday this news came out of the West, Western countries that supposedly Russia have bombed a school with 22 children and six teachers dying. Uh, and uh, as we have uncovered here in INL studio, it was all a hoax. But what do you think of United States involvement in uh, Syria and what do you think of Russia's involvement? American involvement in Syria is contrary to international law. There is no uh, either call or approval from the, from the Syrian government for U.S. troops to 
to go to come to Syria. So this is basically uh, breaking of international law, and I reject it. Right. And regarding Russian involvement, uh, the Syrian government has asked the Russian government to help in uh, in in way to confront terrorism because there is a way of wave of terrorism which is being supported by the West. Yes. And we are we are seeing that uh, Croatian weapons, 3,000 tons, tons, how you say in English, tons, yeah. have been shipped have been shipped to this. Uh, foreign uh, jihadists and uh, terrorists and so on. And we even have admission from U.S. administration mm -hmm. that it is the U.S. government which created and funded and armed ISIL. So we are, being, we are witnessing mm -hmm. a constant, how to say, uh, constant destabilization by United States. And what they do, first they create these terrorists, just like in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. And then they say, oh, terrorists are there, just like Taliban, and now we are going to overthrow them. Yeah. So basically, they are creating chaos in order to find a pretext to, to, to make an invasion, to make an occupation, to make a so-called regime change on uh, not true elections, not true popular will, not true vo voting, vote counting, but instead through direct invasion, occupation, and aggression. And... Uh, as I said, American shim is contrary illegal, and for that reason, America refuses to uh, be re responsible in front of international criminal court. Yes. You know, one... So that's the key question. Why America refuses to be, uh, to be a, a part member of international criminal court? Mm -hmm. Because they know that if they would, for their violations, for their war crimes, just as bo they bombed Libya, just as they bombed Iraq on the false pretext, they said they have weapons of mass destruction. They had no weapons of mass destruction. They concluded themselves that. So they, they would be held uh, responsible, and they don't want it. And uh, what is even worse, they are pretending, pretending to be, how to say, global exporters of democracy, peace, and stability, which is complete nonsense. It has nothing to do with reality. Well, one thing you had mentioned, Ivan, that I found was interesting is you talk about the elites and really what it comes down to is they're wanting to create, they're, they're creating their new world order as we speak about it in the West. Uh, and, and part of that new world order is to dominate all these nations and even Russia they want to bring under this new world order. And I think this is why we're seeing the aggression. As you mentioned, though, about Syria, uh, you know, Russia was invited by the Syrian government to deal with the U.S.-backed and NATO-backed terrorism uh, that's in his country right now. Uh, so, as uh, you know, and, and the same really goes even for Ukraine. Uh, you know, when they speak about where well, Russia was not invited to Ukraine, Russia was invited. When Yanukovych uh, was, was having to flee for his life, he requested the Russian military to help him get him out of the country. So I would actually have to say that, yes, Russia was invited to Ukraine as well as they were invited to Syria. Definitely not the United States uh, whatsoever. Uh, it, was, it, just a it was fascinating when a few months ago there was a CNN uh, a reporter speaking live, and she said that uh, th there was like a footnote written on the screen uh, that United, uh, that uh, Obama will arm pro-U.S. troops. And these pro-U.S. troops, they meant r Ukrainian troops. So basically, America is using poor Ukrainian people as puppets in their confrontation with Russia. And instead of stabilizing situation, they are just provoking and uh, searching for an excuse to basically start a global conflict. And we see it all around the world. Their policy is a copy-paste policy. Ivan, um, in the conclusion, I want to thank you for doing a great job in exposing all this. We are exposing what we can for American people and Australian and Canadian people, New Zealand and, and West over there. 
and and uh, do you think Ivan that uh, this is getting out enough that people are waking up and something will be down done to bring these elite murderers to justice uh, you have found a good uh, word elite murderers because if you or I kill someone we will be held reliable we will go on court and we will be uh, sentenced but when they kill a uh, hundred thousand half a million or million or ten million people nobody asks a single question mm -hmm. and uh, unless a global uh, population doesn't realize that we have a problem this prob problem will keep on going uh, unveiled and it means that the situation will escalate rather than de-escalate and so it is our duty to uh, use our brain and to follow our conscience and to express our views in order to bring more people to the truth and to the reality of what is going on. Yes, uh, Ivan, um, uh, sorry I, I call you Ivan, that's how English, American people would call you, but <laughs> I just want to say that uh, we want to thank you in a, in, for the American people as well. We represent here in Czech Republic American people. And I want to tell you a message from them to you as well, because we know that it's all United States of America's government that is guilty of these war crimes and murders that's going on. But majority of American people are against their government. They're against of of what this government is doing. And the whole point is that there is no real democracy in America. Majority of Americans don't wa want to vote either for Hillary or for Obama. Uh, pardon, or for Donald Trump. But no matter that they dislike, no matter that majority dislikes both Hillary and Trump, one of them will be elected president and he will be making decisions in the name of majority, which is complete fraud. It is not a real democracy. It's a farce which is being... Uh, uh, created through uh, mass media and through those who control them. Yes. Okay. Well, I pray that people, the majority people, wake up those who still sleep. And uh, again, thank you, Ivan, for this interview. Thank you for all your views. Same. We're going and to, all the best. Yeah, all the best all to the you. Best. And thank you so much. Bye bye. bye. Thank you, Ivan. Guys, what you've been watching here, Israeli News Live here with Ivan, and uh, what a, a remarkable interview with this young man here. Uh, politicians have been elected into the Croatian government there, and the stand that he has taken. I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, they, we, we've often used the, the statement that a picture is worth a thousand words. Just looking at the picture that Sputnik posted of him uh, there inside the parliament, and several, uh, you know, members there uh, that, that look at him with uh, contempt, with, with, without, without question. Uh, some curious about his boldness and the stand that he's made. But uh, I would have to say, no matter where you listen at in the world, if you're listening in Croatia, we know people listen all over the world, many different languages, even Israeli News Live translated in multiple languages as well, independently of other people. Uh, I encourage you contact your own parliament members and show your support for those that are that are doing just as Ivan is doing as well and that is opposing the NATO aggression of Russia uh, because Vladimir Putin does not want war with the United States or with NATO or with anybody else He's only trying to bring peace uh, to the region. And they, they run around bringing all these Nobel Peace Prizes like they did not too long ago for what they call the White Helmets, which is just completely a joke with all the uh, propaganda that they have spewed out only to be found out to be false and to be genuine propaganda. Uh, so if you want a real Nobel Peace Prize, maybe they should award it to Vladimir Putin. Uh, but anyway, uh, again, we thank Ivan for, for coming on uh, here on Israeli News Live. Uh, again, courageous in his speech, uh, expressing to the world his views, what he believes. And, and he just, I, I commend him for the bravery, especially when you can see the animosity in the picture here. As, as some of these members look upon him, do not seem to be happy. And maybe because it does affect their pockets, it could be being lined by NATO members.
Okay, well, thank you for uh, watching, and we will be interviewing in a soon future. Uh, most likely, we have an agreement by Vanessa Billy. Well, we don't know if um, she's going to come on yet or not, but she did yes. say she'd get back in touch with us when she uh, returned uh, mm -hmm. back home. So yes, hopefully, so. we'll be speaking with Vanessa next. Okay, well, thank you for watching, and have a good day. Shalom.